Hello folks, today is Friday, March 18th, 2022. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. There's quite a bit to get you caught up on, so let's just jump in. The first thing is, you know, it wouldn't be a week without a Grand Theft Auto 6 rumor. Uh, so of course, go into this, take it with a grain of salt, but uh, here's the newest thing on the street we figured we'd acknowledge. Chris Klippel, who is an insider and who is the founder of Rockstar Mag, he went on record on social media to say, and I quote, an important step in the development of Grand Theft Auto 6 has just been reached. Things should speed up internally at Rockstar. I think that a real announcement at the end of the year may be possible. In any case, I don't see the game arriving before the end of 2024. Again, it's not much. I think the newest thing is to hear that maybe we'll actually get like a reveal announcement this year. That's still up in the air, of course, but it is yet another insider suggesting that it's gonna be a while before we actually see this game. And I'm still okay with waiting. I know a lot of people aren't. I know a lot of people are mad at the fact that they even released that updated PS5, Xbox Series X version of Grand Theft Auto V because they just want Grand Theft Auto VI. I get it. Me personally, I just like game developers completely just taking their time. Relax, make it really good. And with him suggesting that like, you know, development is ramping up at the studio, that's, you know, who knows really. It's really hard to say unless his insider sources and knowledge are true. But Rockstar and their corporate masters did actually officially announce the next Grand Theft Auto game is in development. So we at least have that. And they could have done that because they are reaching significant milestones in their development. That's how that stuff can go. But that's really it. More and more I grow skeptical of people just saying, hey, I heard this, you know. But sometimes it checks out, sometimes it doesn't. So we just talk about it here and have some fun. Now in other news, uh, we got an announcement from Supermassive, the folks behind uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology. And more importantly for me personally, uh, Until Dawn. They are making now this game called The Quarry. It is like a whole standalone traditional game and it seems like it's like a spiritual successor to Until Dawn, like an Until Dawn 2 almost. You can tell just from this trailer, the vibe, everything about it, the like teen, college kid, horror story, everybody's trapped in a house. To the developers themselves actually acknowledging, saying, hey, this isn't really like, you know, House of Ashes, Mad of Medan, Dark Pictures Anthology stuff. This is more like an Until Dawn project. So that to me sounds awesome. I am 100% in specifically because the Dark Pictures Anthology, as much as like it's cool to see them go all in on that, it had its ups and downs. The last one apparently was the best one. I didn't get a chance to play that yet. For what Until Dawn was, where it was just kind of a straight up no BS playable horror movie that looked really cool and featured a bunch of interesting actors. Love seeing that kind of continue here. Uh, the fact that we got Dewey from Scream, David Arquette here, seemingly in a pretty significant role. It looks cool, it looks interesting. We are big fans of horror here, so we're gonna be keeping an eye on this one for sure. And with this one, I, I do wanna flip it over to you. What do you think? How did you feel about the Dark Pictures anthology? Did you pick up and play any of those? Were you an Until Dawn person? Were you as big on that stuff as I was? What are your expectations for this? What do you want from this? Let's talk about this stuff. And in other news, in case you missed it, uh, Gran Turismo 7 uh, was down for almost 24 hours. This is because of a uh, significant patch update and server issue problems that led to the game just having complete downtime. This is tied to the fact that Gran Turismo 7 is a complete online only game, meaning you have to be connected to the internet in order to play pretty much any of it. And a lot of people who just play it like a traditional old racing game, like it still technically is, have been really pissed off to see that this brand new game has been offline. I mentioned in the before you buy a week or so ago that it is always online and how that's not technically good. And now here we are feeling the cost of that. It almost seemed like we were past this. I remember like the early days of the Xbox One with the always online DRM being announced. Like we, we thought we were past this, but it is still ongoing. And it seems like something that is ultimately not very consumer friendly. And I think it's good that a lot of people are pointing this out. By the time you're watching this video, it may be back up, but a full 24 hours just after launch for a game you paid 75 plus dollars for, come on. Hey, next up, this episode is brought to you by Keeps. It's a subscription service that helps men keep their hair and combat symptoms of hair loss. Now you might look at me and think I'm not really a candidate, but hair is very important to me. And that's why it's good that Keeps has you covered because two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35. Can you believe this? What? Yeah. Now at Keeps, you can get quality, real expert care without going to a doctor or a pharmacy. Whether you're trying to prevent hair loss or stimulate some hair growth. They got a bunch of different products so you can get your own custom treatment plan that is doctor recommended with a full 24 seven support behind it. The good thing is that everybody has different goals, different types of hair, different routines, and Keeps' physicians work with you on that, which is pretty sweet. And all this stuff, 
delivered directly to your door. Want to check it out? Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your order, go to keeps.com slash game ranks or click the link in the description down below. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash game ranks. And thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Next up, Sony hosted a whole state of play completely dedicated to the upcoming Hogwarts Legacy game. Now me personally, I'm not a big fan of the original author and uh, if you're not either, I definitely implore you to feel free to skip this section. I definitely want you to be acknowledged and I also want to acknowledge that, you know, jumping into this at the very least, it seems like the developers here in the trenches are putting together a pretty passionate and pretty cool looking Harry Potter game. There are still some unanswered questions, some things up in the air, like I can't help but be skeptical just because of how game releases have been. But on the surface, it does seem like a promising open world, open exploration, Harry Potter, make your own character game uh, with RPG elements. It seems like that we've always wanted. Like for me personally playing Chamber of Secrets back in the day to this giving me bully vibes and if we're not going to get a bully game I guess a lot of people will be happy to take something like this. It is incredibly ambitious and I just really am curious to see if it really will pan out being as good as it looks and sounds. Props to the developers for giving us a full lengthy showcase of the game instead of hiding behind just a couple of little trailers here and there. It's nice to see that out at the forefront, but still it is marketing. We don't get the whole picture uh, and a lot of people are still skeptical. I've seen a lot of people ask like, are there going to be microtransactions? It seems like some things are kind of microtransaction tuned if you look closely, but a uh, developer, a community person at Avalanche and Warner Brothers has said that there are officially no microtransactions in the game. Now that's sounds good. I am always a kind of a believe it when I see it type of person with this. But that's where we're at. I'm especially curious to see how like the open world exploration really feels and how the combat feels. It seems kind of different, but it looks cool. But gonna have to get our hands on it. And uh, just to point out as well, I've seen a lot of people think that this is a PlayStation exclusive. It's not, it's just a marketing thing where the state of play was able to put this out. Moving on though, in other news, in case you missed it, if you're still deep in Elden Ring, like a lot of the world is, uh, they put out a big patch, uh, an update with patch notes, and there's a lot of things there. Uh, there are seemingly new NPCs, a couple of new quest paths, fixes, updates, some nerfs, uh, including them nerfing something that I used very much and I am a little pissed, but what is kind of cool is that it seems like there's gonna be more secrets to discover and it seems like stuff with Elden Ring in terms of like development and patching and updating is pretty active. So I expect to maybe see even a couple of more surprises in the next few coming weeks, especially considering the game has smashed sales records, uh, over 12 million units sold, uh, which is the biggest for a Souls game by a wide margin. And just is crazy to see, it's just crazy to see a game like this be accepted by such like a mainstream audience. It's wild. I actually legitimately never would have seen it coming, but uh, let me know if you're in the same boat there. Next up, I did just want to give us a little shout out. We uh, put up a before you buy video for the Steam Deck. I have it right here. Uh, full disclosure, I absolutely love this thing. I'm going to be talking about this more on social media, on my other YouTube channel, Jake Baldino, uh, because I think it's a really cool device. You've probably read a lot of reviews already. It has flaws significant flaws. But as someone who likes kind of tinkering and tweaking and hacking, uh, I'm having a blast with it. So uh, I just wanted to link that in case you missed it. Uh, it'll pop up at the end of the video or something like that. Uh, so yeah. Along with that, in terms of linking things, I have a couple of cool things I definitely want to link for you below. Uh, they don't need our help, but I always like kind of shouting them out because they put so much work into these. There's a new no clip documentary. Uh, this is centered around the making of Black Mesa, the Half-Life remake. It's damn good. I'm not finished with it, but so far so good. Highly recommend their stuff if you've never checked it out. Also, Tunic has released. It's like a PC, Xbox, Xbox Game Pass type of game. Uh, and the word on the street so far is that it's really good. It's similar to like a Zelda-like, like a Death's Door type of thing. And I hear that another game is out that is really good that I don't have time to play. And I go, oh no. <laughs> but I did link a review from Xbox Era. It's a good YouTube channel. Uh, go check out that video if you're curious about the game. It does seem pretty sweet. Nintendo Life also has gameplay looks at a lot of the new Mario Kart 8 maps that are releasing this week. If you're jumping into that, if you're spending that hard-earned cash to get all those crazy maps, 
Here you go, you have a look here. And we got a very small update from Starfield, uh, just more of a developer documentary thing, to, uh, which to be honest at this point, I'm gonna be completely straight up, doesn't interest me. I definitely wanna see the game. I know how they work here where they kind of like show off the game in the summer and then release it in the fall. That, that's their typical Bethesda thing. It's probably gonna happen again, but I did wanna link it and acknowledge it. There's a couple of interesting things said in here. If you wanna go for a deep dive, there you go. Also last, but certainly not least, the biggest news of the week is the fact that Halo Infinite is coming Coming to PlayStation 5. Yeah, can you believe it? No, there, there was like a fake tweet, a fake post going around, uh, and it was pretty convincing to a lot of, like a lot of people, like an alarming amount of people thought that this was true. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to point it out. It is actually really funny, like Bravo trolling level for getting this out there. But let that be a lesson learned for all of us. I don't know, maybe take the link, maybe send it to your friend and try and trick him. Uh, anyway. But that's a lot of the video game news this week. That's at least what we had time to cover. So I wanna know what you're thinking about everything we talked about. It's, a, it's gonna be a spicy one. There's a lot from Gran Turismo 7 and the online thing uh, to Hogwarts Legacy to Tunic if you're playing that. If you're what, whatever game you're playing this weekend, Final Fantasy, uh, Stranger of Paradise, let me know what you're down with. Let me know what you're into. Uh, let me know what you think about all the stories going on. You know where to find me by now if you're looking for me. But uh, if you if you like watching this every Friday, getting caught up on stuff, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It very much helps us out and we very much appreciate it. We also just appreciate you guys coming around and watching, for real. But I'm Jake Baldino. Uh, congrats to us almost on 7 million subscribers. We're like right there. Again, thank you for being here. But have a lovely damn weekend and we will see you guys next time. Pizza's on me.